Good morning to everyone. I would like to share details of how we have done in the second quarter of the financial year 2023-24. In India, in the second quarter of FY24, as per the same data, the two-wheel industry sales de-grew by 2.44% compared to quarter two of the previous financial year. Scooters grew by 1.13% and motorcycles de-grew by 4.1%. The automotive industry in India had a degrowth of 0.2%. In our overseas operations in quarter two of this financial year, the EU and UK markets saw an increase of 16.2% in the volume of passenger cars sold, though the production of passenger cars growth was only at 3.7%. Our European sales in value grew by 10.1% percent in euro terms. I will now brief you on the financials of the second quarter of FY24. During quarter two of this financial year, as compared to previous years, same quarter, a consolidated total net income grew by 8.1 percent from rupees 23,690.6 million to rupees 25,605.46 million. Consolidated EBITDA grew by 19.2% from Rs. 2,800.2 million to Rs. 3,338.44 million. Consolidated EBITDA margin was at 13%. The profit of the tax grew by 17.5% from Rs. 1,314.94 million in quarter 2 FI23 to Rs. 1,545. 1.55 million in quarter two of FY24, and was at 6%. This included the income of Maraj PSI scheme incentive of rupees 248.79 million. The consolidated financials included the endurance overseas total income of rupees 5,650.69 million. EBITDA was at 835.19 million, which was at 14.8%. And PAT was at rupees 229.38 million at 4.1 percent. The consolidated financial also included the Maxwell total income of rupees 171.27 million, a beta loss of rupees 43.28 million, which was at 25.3 percent, and a profit after tax loss of rupees 64.2 million, which was at 37.48 percent. At Maxwell, endurance team is fully focused on lowering the bought-out component cost and the fixed and variable costs, along with the increase in total income, to be profitable from FY25 onwards. And uh, we hope to be profitable in the quarter of, F of quarter four of FY24. There was no consolidated net debt, and the company had a positive net cash of rupees 4,561.62 million. During quarter two, our standalone total income grew by 3.8 percent to rupees 19,113 million to rupees 19,842.97 million. Standalone EBITDA grew by 8.7 percent to rupees 2,377.4 million to rupees 2,584.35 million, and with an EBITDA margin of 13. Percent. Standalone profit after tax grew by 8.6 percent from rupees 1,312.7 million in quarter two FY23 to rupees 1,425.4 million in quarter two FY24, and the PAT was at 7.2 percent. This included the income of Maraj PSI scheme incentive of rupees 248.79 million. I would like to inform all of you that the Indian OEMs in FY24, as far as the two-wheeler sales were concerned, they were at 24.5 million, which, which was in two, which was in FY19. In FY23, the two-wheeler sales were at 19.5 million numbers, and this year we hope that the two-wheeler numbers reach 20.5 to 21 million. We expect the consumer sentiment to improve in the long run, with stabilisation on the geopolitical front, economic well-being percolating down to the rural areas, and with high increase in sales of premium bikes and EV scooters and EV three wheelers.
The detailed financials are available with the stock exchanges and on the endurance website. I would like to share certain key points on the second quarter of FY24. Our 77% of our consolidated total income, including other income, came from Indian operations, which included Maxwell, and the balance, 23% came from our European operations. In India till date in FY24, rupees 7,774 million of new business was won from OEMs other than Bajaj Auto, which included Royal Enfield, TBS, Hero Motor Corp, Tata Motors, HMSI, Jaguar Land Rover, Mahindra and Mahindra, Punch Power Train and Suzuki. This business win for Rs. 7,774 million constitutes 4,663 million of new business, about 60%, and Rs. 3,110 million of, 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 of replacement business. This Rs. 7,774 million of business will reach its peak in FY26. The total four-wheeler business win till date in this year is Rs. 1170 million. The orders are mainly from Punch Power Train, which is uh, JV between the Saco Group and, and Stellantis, uh, Tata Motors, Mahindra, Jaguar, and, and Jaguar Land Rover. I would like to mention that we have 19 rupees 19,160 million worth of requests for quotes from OEMs. Since FI20 in India, rupees 36,640 million of business has been won other than Bajaj Auto, out of which rupees 25,710 million is new business and rupees 10,930 million is replacement business. The rupees 36,640 million new business will reach peak sales in the years FI25 and FI26 and is mainly for suspension, castings and braking systems. TBS business win has been rupees 5,278 million and is growing. The business one is for <coughs> brake systems, aluminum casting, suspension and drive shop. This rupees 5,278 million sales will reach peak in the next financial year of FI25. The total business win for electric vehicles till date is rupees 6,194 million in the standalone business. These orders are mainly from Aether Energy, Bajaj Auto, Hero Electric, Grease Electric, Bounce and Active. The new business one in quarter two of this financial year is as follows. TBS, which is a rupees 266 million inverted front fork and rear monoshock suspension business. Aether breaks business for the new platform of rupees 115 million. Suzuki new scooter front fork business for rupees 253 million. This is in addition to the rupees 1400 million front fork business already won and the SOP will be in quarter 2 of FI25. HMSI EV casting business win of rupees 40 million at a Vallam plant. This is in addition to the front fork suspension business won for HMSI's first EV scooter earlier in this financial year. The new 35 Daya air suspension front forks for supply to KTM Austria will start by end of this year. With the help of KTM technology from a Valuj Aurangabad plant, the value of the business will be rupees 400 million per annum and will be exported to KTM Austria. The suspension business to both KTM India and Europe should touch Rs. 2100 million in this financial year. A BMS assembly surface mounted technology line will start uh, operations from February 2024 at our Baluj Aurangabad plant. The peak business value will be Rs. 1200 million per annum for the battery management system as well as the EBS ECU, which we should reach in the next financial year of FI25. For EV scooters, we are ramping up our volumes to 240,000 sets per annum for eight parts of EV battery pack and motor housing aluminum castings. The total value to start with will be rupees 1,000 million per annum, which has already started and will reach peak in the next year of FI25. For our aluminum forging business, we are increasing the capacity from 280,000 parts per annum to 600,000 parts per annum at an additional business value of 800 million from our Valuj Aurangabad plant. This business has started and will reach peak value in FI25. We have added Jaguar Land Rover as a new client for EV passenger cars with an export business value of rupees 240 million. Aluminum forging is becoming a new opportunity for growth for both the IC and the EV bike vehicles. At our Chakan plant, we are installing machines for structural aluminum casting like swing arms, subframes, and structural fairings, both for EV and IC models, which are going in for light weighting for Bajaj Auto, KTM, Piaggio, and TBS. This business has already started in this year and will peak in next financial year of FI25. 
Our customers recognize us as a trusted and capable partner in the value chain in terms of both technical and financial strengths. As I mentioned earlier, the electronic vehicles market continues to offer significant opportunity for growth to the auto component sector. Endurance has taken a major step forward to harness this opportunity by executing a share subscription and purchase agreement for acquiring 100% of equity share capital of Maxwell Energy Systems in a phase manner. We have recently increased our equity stake to 56% in Maxwell. As per our agreement, Maxwell is in the business of advanced electronics, particularly in the battery management systems for two-wheeler EVs and, and, automo and automotive and two-wheeler battery packs. At Maxwell, we have one BMS business of Rs. 1290 million in 523 and Rs. 883 million till date in this financial year and have a pipeline of RFQs for Rs. 810 million. Till date, since FI22, Rs. 3,743 million business has been won by Maxwell, which is expected to fully realize in financial year 26. With the current order book, order pipeline, and technical strengths between Endurance and Maxwell, we are confident of achieving our goals in the advanced electronic space. As this break assembly business is growing with addition of Bajaj, TVS, Royal Enfield, Yamaha, Hero Motor Corp, Aether, and HMSI. New business, our second plant at Baluj, Aurangabad, has already been set up for this increase in volumes and has started operations. We will also start this week assembly supplies to Hero Motor Corp from March 2024 and HMSI from November 2024. With this new plant, our this week assembly capacity has increased to 6.2 million numbers per annum and break disc to 8.1 million numbers per annum. The supply of two-wheeler ABS assemblies to Bajaj Auto and Royal Enfield has started. We have reached a run rate of 400,000 ABS assemblies per annum. As you may be aware, competition is mainly from Bosch and Continental, which controls which controls the major market share in the Indian ABS two-wheeler market. We are in the process of supplying a dual-channel ABS from quarter four of this financial year, and we have scaled up additional assembly lines by increasing further to 40,000 ABS assemblies per annum, which will take our capacity to 640,000 ABS assemblies per annum. We are further planning to increase the volumes to 1.2 million single and dual channel ABS assemblies per annum by the end of 2025. We have in March 23 started manufacturing the ABS valves, which is not only a technology component, but is helping us in substantially lowering our costs. Due to increased orders from Bajaj, Yama, India, TBS, Hero Electric, and now Royal Enfield, we have added a new plant in July 22 at Shakan to help increase supplies to 4.5 million wheels per annum. With a new order wins now from Royal Enfield and TBS, we are now expanding to supply 5.5 million wheels per annum from April 2024 onwards. As far as Europe is concerned, in FI24, we have a 19.76 million euro business mainly from two leading German OEMs and from a French-Italian group for, which manufactures passenger cars and commercial vehicles. In the first nine months of 2023, the EU market has seen a battery EV, EV penetration of 15% against 12% and 9% in the previous two years. Out of the 104 million euro order we have won in the last 18 months, Euro 60 million euro orders are for this growing battery EV market. I would also like to point out that Endurance, both in India and Europe, is actively pursuing its focus on gaining access to new technologies and focusing on new product organic and inorganic growth. In quarter four of FI24, our aftermarket sales grew by 20.3% from rupees 1,043.6 million in the previous year to rupees 1,255.2 million in quarter two of FI24. We're exporting aftermarket parts to 32 countries. Now we are adding Brazil, DR Congo, and Cameroon as the new countries, which will take it to 35 countries. Aftermarket sales growth is a large focus area for us, and we are targeting a good growth in this financial year. In quarter two of FI24, the export sales for India's standalone business grew by 12.6%, from rupees uh, 400.1 million in the previous year to rupees 450.6 million in quarter two FI24. The major sales growth came from machine casting sales to Ford Motors in UK and Iveco in Italy, including Case New Holland, and also from two-wheeler suspension exports 
for the KTM plants in Austria, China, and Southeast Asia. On the environment front, I would especially like to mention that Endurance is striving to being carbon neutral in its plants by effective use of solar power and wind power, creating carbon sinks by driving tree plantation and thereby creating dense forests, and driving use of natural gas and LPG in place of electric power and furnace oil. As mentioned here earlier, the use of furnace oil has been completely stopped at Endurance. We have achieved a carbon neutral percentage of 30% till date in FI24, and our aspiration is to reach greater than 50% in the next three years. This has increased from 24.2.6%, which we achieved in FI23. We are also focusing on lowering hazardous waste generation to achieve zero waste to landfill. At Endurance, it will be a continuous endeavor to grow through organic and inorganic growth with a focus on technology upgradation, quality improvement, cost, and environment, health, and safety. We will do our best to fulfill our stakeholder expectations by following our five values of customer centricity, integrity, transparency, teamwork, and, and innovation. We at Endurance have a very positive outlook based on a large new business wins in the last four years, including for electric vehicles, both in India and Europe. With these opening remarks, I would like to invite questions from, from, from all of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may please press star and one to ask questions. The first question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hi, uh, Mr. Jain. A couple of questions from my side. Uh, one is on the order intake uh, both for uh, India EV uh, business and uh, European uh, side as well. We have seen some bit of uh, sluggishness uh, in order intake for EVs in India and uh, likewise for Europe uh, business as well. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, is there any seasonality involved over here or how do we see that? So see, I'll talk about India and then, uh, then Massimo Venuti can speak about uh, the, the overseas EV uh, market, how, how it is shaping up. So, so as you are aware, I mentioned that we have won uh, rupees 6,194 6, million of EV business. But as you know, there was uh, the PAME 2 subsidy in India uh, was uh, largely, I would say, uh, removed from, I think, 1st July 2023, and which did impact, I would say, the cost and the sales of the Indian EV market. And uh, I know that most of the companies are working on seeing uh, how they can value engineer, you know, their, I mean, EV vehicles. Uh, and and I think it's a question of time that it will get back on track. But, of course, uh, you have the, uh, but, but, but you have various OEMs, which uh, which are increasing now the EV sales for both scooters and as as, as as well as three dealers. And uh, we are a part of this journey because we can see the increase which is going to take place. Uh, you know, so, so as far as I think uh, the EV market is concerned, it's, it's, it's only a postponement of the sales. That's okay. it. Okay. As far as concerned, we don't need to speak. Yes. Speaking about uh, Europe, uh, we acquired in the, the second quarter, of course, in the second quarter of this financial year, 20 million of euro. 94% of these uh, business uh, are in the electric uh, field. Uh, for sure, in this moment, uh, uh, the uh, electric uh, uh, is going down due to the fact that starting from uh, uh, the 1st of September 2023, a lot of uh, countries stopped the incentive. But please consider that uh, if I see the registration from January to September 2023 in the European market, the BEV reached 14.8% plus 8.2% of plug-in. And so it means that today, in the first nine months of 2023, the share market of electric was 23%. And so 
Uh, everybody, the OEM are investing in this field for sure. Uh, in this uh, moment, we need a uh, support uh, from uh, the government because the leverage of price of this car is higher compared to the internal combustion engine technologies. But uh, everybody are investing in this direction. So it is only a question of time and uh, um, infrastructure and so on. But uh, I continue to be optimist because in the last period of time, we never acquired a business in the internal in the, in the internal combustion engine. And so everybody are investing in the electric. For this reason, I'm pretty sure that uh, in the next month, the situation could change. Okay. Um, I think my question actually was on overall order intake. Uh, and last year, if I remember it correctly, we did close to about 80 million euros of order intake. Uh, first half was about 20 million euros. So are you seeing any slowdown in demand also reflecting in order intakes or this is uh, this can be pretty volatile uh, uh, due to various factors. So, uh, frankly speaking, uh, the, the answer is yes, because uh, in the last period of time, uh, you have to consider that uh, even if it's not official, because the GDP, uh, there was a reduction in terms of forecast for this financial year and also for 2024, but officially we are in recession. This is the, the real uh, situation in Europe, because... Uh, we can't compare the performance in the industrial market with the registration because in this moment everybody are reducing in an important way the stock to the dealer. Only to give you an idea, if I analyze the registration compared to Q1, Q2 compared to Q1, we have had a reduction of 10%. But if I analyze the production, there was a reduction of 18.7%. And if I analyze the, the quarter, the second quarter of this financial year, Despite an increase of 16.2% in terms of registration, the uh, uh, production go up only 3.7%. So for sure in this moment, there is uh, a reduction in uh, volume into the market, but this is due to the, the general situation, uh, inflation, interest costs. Please consider that 90% of the car are uh, financed and with uh, a leverage of interest uh, from 10 to 15%, uh, the people prefer to postpone the, the the, the, to pass it, no? Uh, so this is the situation. Okay. And in terms, is this reflected in the uh, a production schedule which you get from customers for next uh, 12 months? Uh, is it lower than what we have seen uh, in the last 12 months? Production schedule? Yes. yes, absolutely, yes. If you consider the, uh, as I told you, we have had 18.7% compared to the previous quarter, only 3.7% in this quarter, but if I analyze the year to date, uh, for sure is negative. Without considering that we are comparing this data compared to 2022. Because if you, consider, if you compare this, compare the pre-COVID situation, the reduction is 25%, but is the same situation in the registration. More or less 20%, 22% year to date in the first and second quarter compared to the pre-COVID situation. So the, the, the number of volume are completely different compared to the past in this moment. Got it, got it. And uh, last question is on... Uh, uh, Mr. Gandhi, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. I may request you to kindly read sure, your thank you for follow-ups. Thank you, yeah. sir. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one. We'll take the next question from the line of Arvind Sharma from Citibank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. <laughs> the first question would be... Uh, on your broader demand outlook in both India and Europe, Massimo did allude to it in his uh, comments just now. But if you see from a broader perspective for the second half, both for India two-wheelers and European passenger cars, what's the outlook? See, uh, what I would say is that what we are seeing is, uh, I think the rural, uh, the rural demand is what we feel is going to improve. The sense we are getting from the customers, the volumes will increase. On the two and three wheeler, three wheeler is, 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 is anyway a very good year uh, for I think all the people, including Bajaj Auto and Piaggio. Uh, what we are seeing is a huge increase in, on the high end bike sales. I mean that's really increasing, which is 150 cc or higher. We are seeing a big increase there. EV scooters we are seeing an increase now, and EV three wheelers we are seeing an increase now. Okay, and and also there are many new models which we have entered you know, like Harley-Davidson, Triumph, these are seeing very big increases, you know, and very fast increases. So, uh, so we are quite, quite confident, and plus, you know, we have also won a lot of new orders for EVs, which have been postponed because of the frame to subsidy, which I think uh, in this quarter, next quarter, 
uh, will, 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 will start coming in and, and, and you know, start increasing. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm missing on the European front as well. Yeah. So it's very difficult to speak about the future because in this moment uh, uh, the, the market, the sentiment of the people uh, is not very positive and, and reflect uh, uh, in some way the reduction of the, uh, the, the GDP not only in, uh, in Europe but also in the uh, United States. I can tell you one thing. Despite uh, of, uh, uh, an increase of 3.7% uh, in terms of uh, uh, production, in this quarter, as endurance, we have been able to close with uh, an increase of 10% uh, in, in the turnover. So this is due to the fact that we are starting with uh, a lot of new projects. And for this reason, I'm pretty optimistic that we can manage the situation in the, in, in the next uh, uh, two quarters. But for sure, the, the, the forecast is not positive. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Uh, uh, the other second question would be the normal figures that you share on uh, revenue and EBITDA for the European operations in euro terms? Yes, for sure. So in, uh, in the second quarter of this financial year, endurance overseas closed with 16.2 million of euro of turnover compared 57 of the previous financial year with an increase of 5.8 million of euro, 10.1%. In terms of EBITDA, we closed with 9.3 million of euro compared 6.6 per million of euro of the previous financial year with an increase of 41.7%. The beta for the second quarter reached 14.8% in percentage compared to 11.5% of the previous financial year. In terms of net result, we closed with 2.5 million of euro, 4%, compared 1.7 million of euro, 2.9% of the previous financial year, with an increase of 53% compared to the previous financial year. Great, thank you so much. And so if I may just ask a follow-up on uh, what Mr. Jain said about the higher-end bikes, uh, and I'm including Triumph, Harley Davidson, as well as the recently launched Himalayan by Royal Enfield. Uh, sir, uh, like last time we shared a bit on the on on the expected production numbers. Is it possible to share them now? No, actually, I will not be able to share it because I was not supposed to share it. So if you remember the figures, that's your good luck. But I'm not supposed to share these numbers. But I can only tell you that it's growing fast. And, and sir, I believe the content per bike would be fairly high in all the three models. Yes, I think I did mention that. I think it was, I think it was twenty-eight thousand for the uh, for the Triumph. Uh, the Chaser was about, I think, ten or twelve thousand. And uh, uh, Harley Davidson was. I just have to tell you. I don't have the figures right now. Uh, in, in fact, during the questions, I will I'll get back to you on that. So, but these are all uh, 10, 12,000, you know. Uh, but Triumph is very high. It's at 28. Chetak and Harley was 10 and Triumph 28. Yeah, and uh, Triumph, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. 28,000, Chetak was 10 and Harley is also 10,000. Harley is 10, Chetak is 10 and 28 is 12. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, for responses, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Katri from Mirai Asset Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was mainly on the aluminum content. Uh, so the difference between aluminum content and EV and ICE, uh, we had mentioned that the weight is slightly lower and the value is expected to be around 5% lower. Has anything changed uh, with respect to this? Uh, no, and I think it look it remains the same. But I think what I mentioned is that value. In fact, let me just get out that sheet. Uh, uh, what I remember, the value add, the value add is higher in both. The value add. Okay. In in you know, so uh, the value add is more. Let me see if I can find it. In fact, I'll get back to you on that. I'll get back to you. And uh, honestly, why I asked is mainly because uh, one of the publicly available reports talks about a substantial increase in aluminum content. Uh, it talks about around 30 to 50 percent kind of increase. So I'm just trying to, you know, add both these things. Uh, I would not say 30 to 50 percent increase, but definitely look at more parts, which hmm. are more, 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 more type of parts which are being now, you know, used. Like I mentioned, instead of crankcases and uh, covers, cylinder heads, cylinder blocks. 
you know now now what we see is uh, battery housings upper and lower uh, case transmission you know left and right motor housing hmm. then um, so you know so so you have a load of castings which are lower in weight but the value add is higher okay sir. okay sir and how much would that be around in percentage term the uh, uh, okay i'll just need to find that paper because i have the actual okay this i need to get get back to you sure yes. sir sure sir thank you uh, yeah and i i can tell you that uh, if i to compare uh, the figures uh, there is a other statement i think see uh, what we are seeing is because see there were about uh, uh, say seven parts in say uh, ic2 wheeler versus nine parts in a electric two wheeler the so parts are different like i told you you know so instead of the crank cases cover cylinder block cylinder heads you have the battery housing <coughs> you have the base lco terminal face terminal part terminal ground so many motor so many other castings so here what i'm finding is the value add is actually much higher and the weight is likely more higher because because you have nine castings versus seven you know but it's not 30 to 50% uh, you know because 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 it is it is light weighting because it's an ev the, the castings have to be light weighted you know so they cannot be heavier you know but the value add is 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 you know uh, much much higher the value add in terms of value perfect thank you sir thank you thank you participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on their touch tone phone the next question is from the line of amit hiranandani from smiths limited please go ahead uh, hi team thanks for the opportunity sir uh, 25% of the consolidated revenue comes from the suspension business so how do you intend to grow this piece of business in the mid to long run please see uh, one is <laughs> see, what, see what is happening is that i first first if i look at the 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 normal front box and rear shock absorbers we have got a very large order from suzuki for their scooters which is starting in i think uh, second quarter of july august 2024 but that's a very large order of almost i think 175 crores a year now this is uh, coming in in a in a big way we are also uh, in fact increasing our inverted front fork volumes like i said this year we should do about 210 crores i will not give you a figure but these volumes are increasing every year both for india which is ktm bajaj as well as for ktm in austria and the other countries in china and, and southeast asia so that is one increase which will happen also what we are finding is that uh, uh, you know uh, items like inverted front forks are now being used in 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 the higher end pulsar bikes so we have value engineered that front fork and now but the pricing is of course as you know much better compared to a normal front fork so that is also adding and this volumes are increasing i think it will reach peak in quarter four of this financial year so so we are finding one is how the technology components are being used in the lower end bikes not just the ktl but the high end pulsars we are finding inverted front forks and rear mono shocks very high end business going up new businesses of, of suzuki for example and of course uh, i think there has been a upgradation of products across all the oems that will also increase our business because we already have about 40 to 42% of the indian market you know so the question is we can grow grow in value and maybe the share of business you know as yes, this 40 to 42% indian market share is it this is it in fy 23 right and what was the share in fy 18 fy 19 Uh, FI 18, FI 19. That figure I don't have it off hand, but it was lower. I can just tell you it was lower. It has been increasing every year. That that I can assure you. But I don't know the figure. I don't have the figure right now. But but we can get back to you. You know through through I mean access. We can get back to you with the figure. So my second question is basically um, you have been winning new orders for uh, the EV suspension as well. so you know is the realization and margin profile higher uh, in the ev side i will just leave it at that that it's good because no it is good and we are going to get in fact i forgot to tell you uh, one more area where we are increasing 
The suspension is on the EVs. In fact, I forgot to tell you that. EVs is go really going to grow. As the EV scooters grow, you will see, and the EV three-wheelers grow, you will see a lot of increase in suspension. Because we are on all the major platforms for EVs. And sir, is Endurance paying any royalty to KTM for suspension know-how? No. No. Okay. All right, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. All the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashin from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on the India business margin side. So if we see export subsidy, our margins have remained in that 10-11% uh, sort of a, uh, a number in the last four or five quarters. So uh, how do we see uh, margins going on from here onwards? I mean, uh, uh, is it uh, operating leverage or product mix which would drive improvement in margins in the standalone India with us? Yes, 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 sure. See, first I'll tell you because we always compare the previous year to this year. That's the way we work. Okay. Now, now if you look look at the margins in the first six months, okay, and uh, and this I'm talking about endurance, which is consolidated. Total income has increased by 12% to 550,271 million. EBITDA has increased. In the first half, this is first half figures to first half of last year by 28.1 percent, which has gone up uh, from uh, from uh, 5,245 5, million to 66,770 million, 28.1 percent. The PBT has increased by 37 percent, which is 3,077 million to 4,215 million, and the profit after tax has increased. From 2,349 million to 3,181 million, which is 35.4 percent. So, if you see, we are, we are, in fact, our profits, I've always said it from 2016, are growing much higher than our sales. We are 28, 37, 35 percent. So, the margins are increasing. Now, if I, if you remove the mega project incentive, because that differs from in the first two quarters. In fact, there was, the mega project was only 240 million in quarter two. Versus uh, 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 almost about 340 million in quarter one. Now let's compare the figures, which I would say uh, quarter quarter two to quarter two without the mega project, because so that's a, you know additional income. Now now if you see without our our EBITDA margin percentage has gone from 11.1 percent last year to 11.9. It's plus 0.8 percent. That percentage has gone up from 5.8 to 6.3. This is standalone India I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. So even if I take with mega project incentive, uh, the the margins have gone from 12.4 to 13 percent, and PAT has gone up from 6.9 to 7.2 percent. So we are always focusing in this challenging situation where you have EV coming in. Then you have obstacles, so we are not able to meet our full realizations on EVs. Also, you have to see that uh, the I mean, I mean, our major OEMs, how they are doing, how is the industry doing. Uh, quarter two has been tough compared to quarter one because the two-wheeler industry has fallen, especially motorcycles has gone down. Three of our major OEMs have degrown. In spite of that, 3.8 percent growth, which is there. This 3.8 percent growth also includes the lowering of the RMC uh, part. So where I think we have lost about 57 crores, not lost, I would say, 57 crores has been the impact on sales. So that 3.8 percent is net of, of of this impact of you know 570 million rupees. You know. So what I'm trying to say is that I think these figures need to be analyzed. As far as we are concerned, very we are very highly focused on profit growth. If you have to compare uh, our quarter one to quarter one, and by quarter one to quarter two, you will see a lower growth this year because our growth was very high, you know, in uh, quarter one. I mean, uh, look, you must be knowing if I take without mega project incentive, of course, our growth was 13.3 percent, but the EBITDA margin went up by almost 40 percent. PAD went up by 80. I mean, percent. So you have to look at when we go by quarter. See, that's why I give you half one figures this year versus last year. Because I have to compare how endurance is done over last year. 
without mega project himself because that's why you know I, i mean i mean extra income so i feel we are on the right track we can do much better you know now looking at the future our focus will always be in growing the margins like we have done in the first 6 months we will keep growing of course it depends upon how the order wins which we have won how they move in 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 in, in the next few quarters but uh, definitely we are improving uh, you know uh, from quarter to quarter so i hope i have been able to explain it sure sir sure thanks thanks for the detailed answer so uh, second question was regarding the profitability in the euro business uh so uh, sequentially there was some drop uh, in, uh, you know uh, margins over there as well uh, so is it something related to seasonality or is there something to read into uh so i'll request um, masemo to speak but i think it's to do with drop in volumes i think uh, but but he can speak uh, masemo <clears throat> yes i'm here so speaking about the profitability for just speaking There is a, a, a reduction uh, in compared to the, the, the previous quarter due to the fact that we have had a reduction of volume. And so, uh, if you if you see the turnover in the second quarter has been 62.8 million of euro compared to 68.8 million of euro the previous quarter with a reduction of 9%. The bid uh, go down. to 14.8% compared 16.1% only for the reduction of volume in the in the turnover but if you analyze the uh, year to date uh, compared to the, the the previous year we are closing with 15.5% of EBITDA compared to 12.6% please consider that we continue to analyze the, the the figures compared to the previous year but uh, Uh, you, I know that uh, you are. Uh, you, you see the, the profitability of endurance overseas in 2018, 2019, 2020. But we are talking about a different world in terms of volume, unfortunately, because in this moment we are doing minus 20 percent. The market is doing minus 20 percent. In 2018, the total market reached 13 million vehicles. We closed the previous financial year with 9.5 million. Probably this year will be more or less the same. And so, unfortunately, uh, the the bid for sure is uh, affected by this reduction of volume. But I I believe that 15.5 percent of the bid is not so bad in our in our field. Considering also that, uh, for sure, we have the same problem of the previous financial year in the energy cost. But compare 2019, 2020, we are paying three times gas and energy, and this it means more or less two percent of the bid only in this field. So. And, and and see my request is please look at first half of last year versus first half of this year so what masimo is saying 15.5% ebitda margin is uh, is actually first half versus first half and uh, that is the way you should see the quarter to quarter things can differ it's last year versus you know this year i would also like to mention there are consolidated financials includes maxwell maxwell is a very strategic call we have taken to be a part of the eb journey look there will be some hurdles always along the way but we are very confident that we are on the right part of the journey you know and uh, we are very confident that we will have positive results with the endurance we believe in profitable growth and this is going to happen it's a product mix issue which will be resolved from quarter 4 it will start happening from then and and uh, hopefully the next financial year will be you know good so What I'm trying to say is that everything should be seen in light of what exactly endurance is doing, you know, uh, and and we are very confident about Maxwell because of the technology, the kind of new order wins. We'll tell you next time which are the new order, new I mean order wins we are getting, what opportunities we are getting. So we are we are quite excited about uh, Maxwell to be honest, you know. But it takes time, you know. EV is still a very emerging market in India. They'll do well. We have to take some pain in the first couple of years, but things will improve. Yes, thank you, sir, for the detailed answer. I join that lecture. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Shirish Gote from HDFC Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, sir. Thank you for taking my question. I hope I'm audible. Yes, uh, sir. I want to understand. Uh, generally, like uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, growth opportunities coming uh, for uh, uh, other ancillaries uh, from the uh, uh, aluminium casting exports and non-auto exports. So, any uh, progress that we have made, if you could highlight, uh, that would be helpful, sir. 
See, actually, die casting, as you know, endurance is a leader. Um, and it's a leader not only because of capacity and uh, capability and technology and process, but a lot of experience. And trust me, we are getting a lot of opportunities, uh, both both for exports as well as in India. The question is what we choose. Right now, our focus is on four-wheeler in a large way and on machine castings. And we are looking at definitely EV as well as structural casting because of light weighting. So this is the focus we are doing. Export, of course, is a is a is a is, is a major major focus, and we are working on how to increase the export business. But uh, Europe has its challenges because the number of vehicles sold are less, like it's at 20 percent less compared to 2018. So those challenges are there. But we are definitely focusing on the Indian four-wheeler market in, in, in a large way that is growing, like I mentioned in the past uh, quarter on calls. So uh, so uh, so I mean that's what I would like to say. You know. But uh, just uh, just wanted to understand this uh, export opportunity. Is that uh, going to be meaningful for you guys, or uh, are these coming at uh, better margins, or no? I mean, any yes. anything specific you can share? No, definitely they are coming at at better margins. The question what happens is whether the volume orders as per the LOI we get is sustained or not. So so we did have an issue in this year where the volumes uh, were less than what uh, was to, to have been taken. And that we can understand because the volumes are less than what they had estimated, you know. So I would say that whatever the exports are happening, the four-wheeler focus which we are happening in India, are definitely at, at good margins. And they are better margins. That's for sure. Because, see, our focus is, why I'm saying about machine castings, structural castings, uh, EV casting, because... Because there the margins are good. So we have to focus where the margins are good. I don't want to do any more raw castings now, you know, because, it, because you don't make that much money. So the focus will be always on machine castings, for four-wheeler castings, for lightweight and structural castings, EV castings. So that's where we are headed, including for exports. Okay, so and uh, sir, if, if it is possible, this is the last question. If it is possible, can you share with the breakup uh, within casting how much is four wheeler and how do you see that uh, playing out uh, going back? Yeah, I cannot share the breakup, but I can say that four wheeler in general is higher. I can tell you that it is higher, especially when you talk about commercial vehicles is the highest, then passenger cars, and then you have the two and three gears. So, so, so that I can tell you. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Uswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Just one clarification on incentives. Uh, we talked about uh, you know, incentives uh, for 2Q was expected to be 34 crores uh, in last quarter. Uh, was that uh, uh, understanding right? And vis-a-vis that it has come to 24 crores? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I'll request a rate to answer that. I'll clarify that. See, uh, the way we book uh, incentive, it, it goes by how we apply and how government sanctions and uh, pays us the incentive. So the amount that was an estimate which was mentioned last time was not supposed to entirely come in quarter two. So based on our, based on our, if you see, we've been booking roughly around 59, 58 crores every year, roughly. Okay, the last two, two three years. So. This year, based on our uh, sales appetite, that means GST bearing sales in the state of Maharashtra, uh, we booked 34 crores in quarter one and uh, 24.8 crores in quarter two. Uh, in case the balance amount of 10% that belongs to earlier years, in, in case such amounts get cleared during quarter four, then there's expectation of more uh, incentive coming in, but uh, that is not certain at this point in time. So it was said in that perspective. Got it, got it. And the second question pertains to as an extension of uh, Shivishil's question on aluminum die casting. So uh, on the aluminum die casting side, uh, uh, given where we are in terms of our journey uh, uh, and the order wins which we have, over the next two to three years, uh, uh, how big can EVs and non-autos be as a percentage of aluminium business, uh, given that we have done a good amount of work uh, and orders have come in? 
uh, how big this uh, PVs and non autos can be over the next three years for aluminum die casting business? So see, what I can say is ki, uh, the growth will be the growth will be high. But where the growth will lead us to as a percentage, I don't know. But if you talk about the values, the values can definitely double in the next three to four years. And and, and, and that's the focus. You know? So uh, so the question is that you know uh, see, see what is happening is because we are a, I can say we are a technology leader in all the products we make for two and three wheelers, or even for four wheelers on castings. There's a lot of upgradation uh, which is happening. There's a lot of value engineering which is happening. We are trying to see how to improve profit margins. Uh, so, uh, so I think it will depend, and definitely we are taking profitable opportunities. We are not growing sales just to grow sales. We have to see the margins have to increase. That's why I gave without mega project incentive figures of the first half of last year versus in this year. You should also take into account that Maxwell is is is, is a very strategic call taken. If you see, I bit the first half is 13.6 percent in India. It's 13.6. You know, so the and that can be explained. You know, so what I'm trying to say is, look at it from from the from by going to details to to I mean analyze. The, the business and the financials at at at, at intervals. Right, right. And uh, uh, on the PV side, I believe we have won some orders uh, from uh, Tata Motors VV uh, on the aluminum die casting side. So uh, is, is the content there materially higher uh, vis-a-vis uh, say what we supply to Hyundai, Kia, or Eminem, uh, uh, ice versus VV on the aluminum die casting? I do not know the content for vehicle, the way we track, uh, you know, uh, I, mean, I mean, two wheelers and three wheelers. I don't know what is the content per vehicle, but definitely the order wins are increasing for, for Hyundai, Kia, and Tata Motors, and now Mahindra. Mahindra is coming in in, in a much bigger way. We've just, we're going to start two, two, I mean, oil sums for them also. So, 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 so the order wins are quite good. The question is that all these OEMs should respect the, the LOI volumes. Because what I give you figures are based on the LOIs, what we get. True, true, true. And the last question is on again on the aluminum die casting. So clearly, with our focus on fully machine uh, components, uh, where are we in the journey today? Uh, for the uh, two years back, and uh, based on the uh, orders on hand, where should we be in two to three years time? Fully machine die casted components. Machine castings, whether semi finished or finished, is at seventy percent. In, 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 in India, approximately. Okay. Our focus is to take it to 100%. We don't want to do raw castings. But there are certain understandings with, you know, I mean, our old OEM customers. But we are trying to change that in future. You know, even with semi-finished machining, because the value add is much better. So that 30% needs to be converted to with machining. Got it. Got it. Great, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask questions, you may please press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, no, I have no further comments. I just want to thank, you know, all the people who attended and joined the call. Thank you for their time. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.